Hey guys, it's DC here and today we're going over the 2019 Cyber Security Salaries. So the following salaries are based on positions that I actually see uh, out there every day. They are all uh, based on full-time salaries and the information was from people that I've talked to uh, places that I've worked at as well as um, some un online resources as well as some online sites like Glassdoor and payscale.com and all that sort of stuff. I also went to a couple of websites uh, for job postings to see what new jobs were coming out with these sort of salaries and then I, I made an average salary in between what those salaries were. So just to um, dip our feet in a little bit I guess the average salary across all of the jobs in cybersecurity is $158,000. So that's um that's a pretty good average across the entire industry. Um, but keep in mind a lot of the earlier positions like the startup positions are quite a bit lower than that and not all of them are sort of around the 150 mark. So don't get too excited, they're not all that crazy high. Okay, so the first job on the list is the cyber security graduate. Now this is the job that is for people who are fresh out of college um, or studying their set of certifications that they want to get into their position. It's for those, you know, early graduate roles where you've, you've literally just finished studying. The average salary that I could find here was $70,000, which is pretty good as a, a base salary. It's similar to like a network engineer or some sysadmins um, salary. So yeah, pretty good. Uh, I think it's like the same as what a teacher makes as well. Some teachers anyway, maybe more than some teachers. And yeah, it's a it's a pretty good wage. So $70,000 for the cybersecurity graduate. Now the next one is the cybersecurity consultant. And this isn't um, so much of the contract position. This is again a full-time position. A consultant is usually someone who's uh, working on a help desk and they're solving the um, basically the grunt work. All of those tickets that come in for small jobs, they need to get them done and they're basically working on billable hours. A lot of the time you find this position in somewhere like a managed service provider or MSP. Um, they just brand everyone on the help desk a cybersecurity consultant, whoever is working in that security team anyway. But yeah, the uh, average wage that I could find is $80,000, which is pretty pretty good. It's about spot on. Um, way back when I was working on help desk and there was no such thing as like a cybersecurity consultant or cybersecurity anything, I, was, I can tell you right now I was earning a lot less than $80,000. So it's good to see that the security guys are getting a little bit of an incentive here to join uh, sort of security help desk uh, sort of roles and to push forward in those particular things. This is one of those jobs that's really worth getting. Um, if you can get like this job as a graduate position and then use the experience for a couple of years, like two, maybe three years experience, and then move into something higher like a, an analyst or an engineer role, you will be absolutely golden because you'll have the experience. You've already done the certifications to get that job, I assume. And yeah, you can um, you can sort of make some really good money in this job. You will also learn so much. And I guess it's sort of like a guy told me the other day that I'm a very balls to the wall kind of person. And I guess I am. I, um, I definitely like learning by being thrown into the deep end. And um, I guess it's like sink or swim, right? And I, I always swim. And that's not for everyone, which is fine. Everyone has their own way of learning. But if you're a similar person to me and you, if you're thrown into a hard situation and your only way out is to get through it, then an MSP or managed service provider with a role like a cybersecurity consultant is absolutely perfect for you. You'll just eat up all of that information so quickly. All right, the next position is the cyber security analyst. Now, analysts are sort of more on the log inspection uh, end of the job and they usually move into being like Splunk engineers or something like that 
where they can eventually earn more money. They're also going to be going through those security tickets in the help desk just because that's part of the job. And it's really not until much later when you escape those tickets. So don't start thinking that you're, you're not going to be solving tickets in uh, jobs and taking calls and helping customers with security tasks. You're going to be doing that almost like 70% of your career progression. But anyway, the cyber security analyst is on $90,000 per year, which is, it's a pretty good role to be honest. It's basically like the consultant role, but a little bit more in depth and usually in somewhere like a security operations center uh, or some other people I've heard. Well, actually I've only heard one person call it a systems operations center, but um, yeah, if uh, you get a job in one of those sort of places uh, as a security analyst, you're going to be doing a lot of log inspection and a lot of um, sort of network troubleshooting, I guess would be the way I would put it, where you're going to be looking at switches and some files and actual hardware appliances to see what the problems are and then potentially fix them or escalate them. The next job is the Cyber Security Risk and Compliance Officer. Now this role is sort of mixed in with a whole bunch of other stuff and is far less technical than pretty much every other job in cybersecurity. These roles rely mostly on your knowledge of risk versus reward and specifically with cybersecurity controls. So for example, someone in this role would uh, take different notes of jobs or tasks that have been completed or, or flags that came up from the analysts and then they'll be taking them into risk and compliance meetings to talk with other management and their own management in cybersecurity to then potentially come up with a solution to this and then they'll weigh out the risk of that and then to make sure it is compliant with all of the standards that that company has to abide to. So it's it's a lot of paperwork in this role and it's it's not for everyone. A lot of the people I guess who are watching these videos want to get more into the technical side of things. However, these jobs are out there and they're, they're pretty good and they average $95,000 per year, which is pretty good. Um, considering you're doing a lot of document writing and you sort of get to talk in between all of the teams and you can sort of move out of there into management as well eventually. Um, yeah, it's a pretty good role to have and something that will sort of push a career forward if you are interested in management as well. Okay, the next job is the cybersecurity engineer, which is probably the one that I think most of you are here to uh, find out about. And it's it's probably the most common role throughout cybersecurity. There's engineers in SOC teams, there's engineers in service providers, there's engineers in everywhere. They're absolutely everywhere and um, they're probably the most sought after position that I could find on any job posting website. A lot of the work of an engineer is going to be doing migrations and new setup of uh, different tin, so different hardware for security controls like firewalls and switches etc. They're also going to be going through all of those tickets that the analysts and the consultants are working through just because it is still part of the job here they're just going to be more of an escalation point and um, working on specific clients to resolve different issues. The average salary that I could find is $140,000 which is pretty high I guess for um, a glorified consultant but that doesn't mean it's not a great role and it doesn't mean that it's you know less of a position than any of the other ones as well. It's a very good position to have. It's a very good average pay to have as well. And there's a lot of doorways that sort of open when you become an engineer into other roles like architects or potentially even management. Um, maybe you want to go back to being a risk and compliance officer, or maybe you want to start your own business and um, become a, a pen tester or a, like a security order like myself. But yeah, these positions are super common, especially in the US. I found so many jobs with the title cybersecurity engineer in the US. It's absolutely mental. That and uh, the cybersecurity analysts were like the top two cybersecurity jobs in across the US by far. Okay, next up on the list is I guess the uh, middle management sort of side of things. And that is the cyber security architect. Now the architects are basically exactly what the title is. They are designing these networks and security controls 
for the engineers to then deploy and um, yeah they need to make sure that everything is absolutely spot on they also have to liaise with other uh, architects on different teams like systems architects to make sure that um, all of their controls are going to work and everything's going to be in sort of some sort of happy harmony these guys get paid quite well because they're i guess the risk involved with this position is quite high like you cannot make mistakes here because if you do your head is the one on chopping block for the person who made a very bad design um, or had some sort of flaw here and i don't mean like some sort of a system that's vulnerable or something like that because that almost happens everywhere anyway i'm talking about something that just plainly doesn't work but anyway these guys average 170 thousand dollars a year so definitely worthwhile having um or moving up into this sort of position because it it does while there is a lot of risk involved um it's a pretty fun job to do i guess and you also sort of get to tell everyone else what to do which is kind of fun if you enjoy a power trip so there is that all right the last job on the list is the cybersecurity director or ciso or ciso or whatever you want to call them these guys are basically just the overall management they're going to be talking with the ceo the cfo all the all the c's basically the ceos of of upper management and um their head is definitely on the chopping block which is why they get paid a huge amount of money averaging one hundred and ninety thousand dollars a year which is absolutely outstanding that's a very good wage and um i guess the reason for this is because they, they really do have to tell everyone what to do and they also have to um give those other guys in the team's controls which they have been handed down from the ceo and sometimes the board of directors or, or however that company or business is structured and um yeah they have to sort of articulate that to the engineers and the architects and, and everyone else below them to um, a point where everything is sort of working in some sort of harmony and i i wouldn't want to be a director myself i know the pay is really great but um it's not for me it that sort of job isn't for me and it i just i wouldn't find it fun however some people would absolutely love it especially the guys who are moving up from risk and compliance officer into something into like some other management role and then eventually becoming a ciso um yeah that's that's usually how that sort of goes down these days but yeah it's a it's a lot of paperwork it's a lot of work and um yeah it's not for me <laughs> Anyway, that is the cybersecurity salaries of 2019 all wrapped up in one pretty little video. If you have enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave me a like, comment if you have any questions, and please do subscribe for more. It'll definitely help me out. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.